What is going on guys? I am Consumer Tech Review and today we're gonna to be doing a review of the Yunzi KC84. I'm gonna do the unboxing for you and then I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons and my own real life experience that I've had with this keyboard. And if at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same keyboard, all of Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. But let's get into that unboxing. Here is the timestamp if you wanna skip it. All right guys, unboxing the Yunzi KC84. Super excited to unbox this thing. Don't even know if we have to cut anything, but I wanted to do that. Uh, we don't. Awesome. This is actually the second unboxing that I haven't had to do that. So pretty cool box. It's all blue. Kind of forgot to show you guys, but it looks nice. Let's open this thing up. Okay. And there it is. Oh yes. This, I didn't actually know the colorway that I was getting. Uh, they just said, here is the keyboard. I wanted this colorway. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. Right off the bat, it feels pretty heavy. Okay. Right from feeling the plastic. Typically when I do these unboxings, I can feel right away. If this is a high quality keyboard, the plastic feels high quality. Wow. Does this thing look good? Those keycaps, the orange, I hope it comes through on the video because those keycaps look so ridiculously good. Oh, the orange on the dark, oh, that looks so good. All right, let's see if there's anything else. We got PBT keycaps, obviously. Look at how gorgeous those are. You got full color RGB, which I actually wasn't expecting because of those keycaps. They don't actually look like they're shine through. I still don't expect them to be. Looks like you got a lot of the presets on here, which is really nice to see. Very easy to understand. Got a black USB-C cable, fantastic for customizing it even more. You get a very interesting switch blower. This thing is thin. Look at that. It's so thin. Uh, and then you got a keycap puller as well, but that's everything in the box. We got browns on this, my favorite. You guys know brown switches are my favorite. I've been getting so many brown switch keyboards recently uh, just because I don't know why. I'm like, I should, I should really try some more. I'm not, I gotta say, this is really interesting keyboard because, let's look at the back first. Okay, you do have the three different channels. Uh, I do like to see that, although, this does look a little bit small for like a custom key cable. So we'll have to check that. Got the flip up risers right here. Those feel really nice. They're thick too. The whole thing's rubber there. So now I will say something kind of strange uh, is that most keyboards kind of have the keys pointed this way. These are all pointed like straight out. So it's kind of like a stare. Uh, it's kind of strange, but not a bad looking keyboard. Let's get a sound test really quick. Sounds pretty good. The space bar, not my favorite sound, but most of the keys do sound pretty good. I think the stabilizers on these are not my favorite, but the keys feel really good themselves. Not terrible, just not my favorite. But that is my unboxing of the KC84. You guys know I love 75% keyboards, but here's a full review. Take it away, Future Consumer Tech Review. And we are back. Let's get right into the first pro, which is that 75% form factor, which I absolutely love. It's compact, yet super useful, and has all the keys that you're really gonna need on a normal day-to-day -day basis. I find 60% keyboards are great for something like game uh, but when I'm going something like editing, I need the arrow keys, I need all those other keys. You're basically taking a TKL and you're putting it in this small form factor. And for me, it's just super functional. All right, now let's talk switches. This thing has Gateron switches. You can either choose from a black, red, blue, or a brown switch. I got the brown switch because that's my favorite switch. And they feel really good on this. They feel solid. They feel nice. The stabilizers are pretty good. And overall, it's a positive experience. And here is the sound test. Take a listen. And that's how it sounds. All right, moving to the next pro. This is the biggest pro with this keyboard, in my opinion. It is fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So basically you can upgrade this to whatever you want. Uh, you can put kale switches in this. You can put MXs, Cherry MXs if you want. You can basically put any switch you want in it because it's compatible with three and five pin. And this is probably the biggest pro for me because you can get this keyboard and then customize it and build it really however you want. So the longevity of the keyboard is really infinite. All right, now let's talk about the keycaps. Now this is in a certain colorway that has much different keycaps than all the other ones. Uh, but if you do want more normal keycaps, they are in the same link in the description. They're just a different option. You'll see it down there. But these are a super nice PBT, uh, double shot PBT die subbed. Uh, and they're not shine through, uh, but they are really, really nice. Now they're different though. So they are flatter uh, and wider than normal keycaps. And they're also like kind of flat. So you know how normal keycaps kind of have a dip to them. Uh, these have a slight dip, but they're kind of ergonomically shaped. 
This is not how this is. Every key is almost the same as the other one. And it was kind of weird to get used to, although I don't mind it. I do prefer the other one, but some of you might like this and it's definitely a different look and it looks good on a 75% keyboard. Uh, but to give you an idea of kind of what I mean, if you took the arrow keys from a normal keyboard and tried to flip them and switch them around, uh, they wouldn't look right. They wouldn't feel right because they're like shaped for your hand. Whereas this one is not. You could flip all of the arrow keys and they would not be different. Now this is just a different style. Uh, I didn't see it affecting my typing experience. So it's not gonna be like affecting your typing experience. So it is just up to personal preference, but the feeling of the keys and the feeling of the material is really, really nice. Also the printing is like top notch. All right, and then the next pro is this keyboard is fully programmable. So you can remap any of the keys to whatever key you want it to be. Uh, as well as that, you can change any key to a macro. So you can have like your W key a macro. You can have every single key on this keyboard be a macro, which is really, really cool. And man, that's that's something cool to have that you don't see on a lot of uh, lower end keyboards. All right, now let's talk RGB. This keyboard does still have RGB lighting, even though the keycaps are not shine through. So it comes on on the edges of the keys, which I do like, it's a good look. Uh, now I will say there is a lot of pros with the RGB. First, tons of settings, tons of modes, perky lighting, all the basic stuff. It's pretty bright. Uh, they have good colors, but a nice thing. And this is not normal. And especially with these keycaps, this is something that you're going to want probably the colors of this are good, normal RGB, but it has white and it's like white, white. So if you get some keyboards that are like non RGB and they just have a white backlight and it looks nice, it looks more like clean. It's a different look, but a lot of people will use that kind of backlighting with non shine through keycaps. This keyboard has that as well as the RGB. So it actually looks white. It's not some like off kind of purpley white that most RGB LEDs try to be. This one actually looks white and it's really nice and clean, especially with these keycaps, I do recommend it. And like I said, you do not need software to change the RGB and let's go over how to do it, just the four main functions. FN pause changes the lighting modes. FN home changes the color of the mode or a static color, whatever. FN slash turns off the backlighting and then FN spacebar pauses the mode, which is cool. So if you wanna have a rainbow going across it, you can pause it in the middle and it'll just stay static like that. And that's actually kind of cool. I haven't seen that on like any other keyboard. And obviously you can change the brightness and there's a bunch of other settings for the RGB, but those are like the four main ones. All right, the next part was the build quality. This thing is built really, really well. There is a tiny bit of flex on the keyboard just because it uses mainly plastic construction. It's still fairly heavy, uh, but it uses a lot of plastic construction, although it is solid plastic. It's not like a cheap plastic. Uh, so you don't feel like you're getting some cheap keyboard. However, even though there is side to side flex with the keyboard, it's very minimal. Uh, the actual typing experience is very, very solid. And that is a big Pro because it makes these Gateron switches feel nice and solid. That's obviously one of the biggest uh, ways to change the feeling of a switch is actually the build quality and sound and vibration dampening, which this could have more of, but 95% of the keyboards could, right? So you can even mod this yourself. If you're getting this keyboard, you're probably gonna do some modifications to it. But the last pro is it does use a USB-C cable. Now there is one con with it. Now this has three channels to actually have the cable come out of. So it either comes out of the left, the right, or the front. Now. This is great and all, it uses a detachable USB-C cable. However, it's tucked pretty far inside and the opening is just not that big. Now, the problem with this is a lot of custom cables, like a lot of custom coil cables have a pretty fat USB, like, I don't know, like protector right there. And that's great and we like that, but when you have a keyboard like this, it can't fit in there. So my custom coil cable couldn't fit in there. So I have to use this like crappy uh, braided cable that came with it. I mean, it's not crappy, it's just not, you know, a custom cable. So that's like a big issue. And that's like probably the only big con with this keyboard. Now I wish that they just wouldn't have a recessed USB at all. Or if they did do what like Akko did and make the opening massive so you can fit any cable. I mean, the Akko 3108, that keyboard had a recessed USB-C and it had three channels again, uh, but it actually had such a big opening. I could fit basically any cable in there. But this is still a fantastic keyboard. And if you do want those three and five pin hot swappable-ness on keyboards, it's absolutely a great option. And if you do want shine through keycaps, check the link below because there is other versions in the same 
link. It's like different colorways. And those are shine through and they're actually like $10 cheaper. Again, if you do wanna go check this out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK and Canada. But if you guys enjoyed this video and it helps you out, help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy keyboard reviews and a little bit of gaming mice reviews and maybe some speaker reviews here and there, uh, but mainly keyboard reviews, definitely subscribe to Consumer Tech Review. And if you like monitor reviews, then I do have a monitor channel. It's called Type-C Tech Reviews. I'll also have it down there in the description. So definitely check that out. But this was Consumer Tech Review and I'll see you guys later.